So moving on to Africa, a couple, I was here a couple of weeks ago in this very room, uh, listening to the, um, particularly the African influence and what is happening uh, in Africa. And the Sands for Africa Foundation, who I met and will be meeting again in a couple of weeks in Kigali in Rwanda, absolutely blew me away in terms of taking Joe's point. This is already happening in Africa. The emphasis on research, the emphasis on connecting the dots is already happening. And I've learned that over the last couple of years as I've got to know, I don't know Africa, I know a little bit about Africa, and that in itself is worth knowing. So today I'm pleased to say we're joined by three speakers from Africa, who I'm going to appeal to, to give us a five minute intervention from each of them. And I know all of them. So the chances of them sticking to time, and this is a challenge for them who are listening, uh, is Nikhazy, especially you with your many slides, uh, please try to keep it to five minutes each, because I want an opportunity then to ask you a couple of questions to inform the audience here and uh, online. So maybe we could start by introducing, uh, we were meant to have Dr. Amit Packer, but like all of us these days, he's on a delayed flight, I think, or something uh, in Africa. He's actually in Africa at the moment. So I think we have a replacement um, with uh, Daniela, who I know very well from Africa Health Business. And I see here we have Nikhazy Ndembe, who is from the African uh, Center for Disease Control, who I met at the pleasure of meeting last June, I think it was, in Johannesburg. And then in addition to that, we have another speaker from the CDC who will talk to us about what's happening in Africa about digital. So I'm not sure the order has changed a little bit with, I think we're gonna take Nikhazy first. Are you with us, Nikhazy? You will hear him in a moment, I hope. Yes, I can hear There he is, the man himself. Please, over to you, Nikhazy, five minutes. Live in hope. Okay. Please. All right. I'm not sure if uh, you can hear me, but hello. We can hear you, yeah. Nikhazy. So good, good. I think if good. you begin, the AV will catch up. Good. So let's let's um let, let's move on. Uh, next slide, please. Hello. The yes. No. Let me start by laying this foundation for my colleagues um, and specifically um, uh, really Jean Philbert, Dr. Jean Philbert, but by providing information on uh, the new public health order. So if you look uh, carefully on this slide, uh, you can see there are five pillars. The first one is around really ensuring that we strengthen uh, Africa, Africa CDC National Public Health Institute across the continent. The second is ensuring again that we really um, uh, build capacity, human, cap uh, human capital uh, to be able to sustain those National Public Health Institute. The third one gonna be really connected to those two, really increasing domestic financial investment. And then that will follow again with uh, uh, training of that uh, human workforce, ensure that we have a respectful uh, partnership. Next slide. Yeah, let me just briefly, because I have five minutes. Uh, so the first pillar around strengthening public health institute is really to ensure that the continent is prepared to next pandemic. And that cannot be possible if we don't have really digital solutions. Uh, around this uh, public health, uh, new public health agenda. So a public health institute for research, the workforce development, the laboratory, very interesting uh, presentation for those that uh, touch on the genomics. We have established a large network of genomics lab across the continent. And you do agree with me that those data needed to be curated. And that's again, uh, where we see a very critical role of uh, digitization. Uh, genomic surveillance, uh, emerging preparedness, pandemic response, again, and disease prevention are critical for uh, really uh, our response to pandemic. Next slide. So this cannot be achieved if we don't train a significant uh, pool of really um, uh, rapid responders. 
And this is definitely going to come in with a lot of um, really trainings around uh, digitization. How do we connect the dots from the 55 AU member state in terms of uh, capacity building? And then uh, also in terms of strengthening that workforce development is very important. As we are providing the Africa Epidemic Service, it's very important that we also connect uh, in terms of how we strengthen our digitization platform. And based on what my colleague definitely gonna to touch in subsequently on that digital transformation. Next slide. The third pillar, which, uh, next please, uh, just so that we can, uh, yeah, it's uh, around vaccine manufacturing, uh, diagnostics, therapeutics, and again, uh, that will cover medical countermeasures. So these definitely, there are several enablers that we have identified for the partnerships of Africa vaccine manufacturing, uh, including that um, uh, demand intelligence and market shipping, strengthening or having a robust uh, uh, research and development, which again, that's gonna be definitely linked on the digitization to move the agenda of manufacturing at least 60% of the vaccines by horizon uh, 2040. Again, the financing infrastructure, building those ones and achieving those targets are definitely gonna require that we strengthen our digital platform. Next slide. The fourth pillar, very important, domestic financial investment for health. The AU member states have strongly advocated to, be, to secure at least 5%, 15% uh, of their GDP for health, and then including, obviously, digitalization, digitalization to move this agenda forward for the continent, for those 1.4 billion people that we definitely care across the continent. Next slide. So the last pillar, so that it's very clear, we uh, work around six fundamental uh, principles around action-oriented partnership, they have to be originated and defined by the continent priorities. They have to align with the continental priorities, including the Agenda 2063, EFCTA, trusting effective partnership, that coordinated partnership, co-creation of projects, committed partnership, and the mutual benefit uh, and understanding to ensure that we drive continental agenda. Next slide. Thanks, and back to you, Brian. Thank you. Um, look forward to seeing you quite soon. Um, that's an example which some of you may be surprised at of what's actually happening in Africa. All too often, I think, we, if I can use the term in the West, have perceptions. We need to understand the reality. And the reality is that as the term is used in Africa, uh, Africa is rising uh, and we should be going with it. We should not be sitting in our lofty, uh, places and being arrogant and thinking we know it all because I think we can learn an awful lot from Africa. So our next uh, speaker, I'm not sure whether it's Daniela or it is Daniela. Daniela, I know you don't look anything like uh, Dr. Ahmed Thacker, uh, but I know you work with him in Africa Health Business and I was glad to see you in Johannesburg recently as well. Please, over to you. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm glad uh, that you've... <laughs> introduced me as looking nothing like uh, my boss, Dr. Amit Thaka, but I'm really glad to join this um, panel. And uh, I want to talk about uh, something that is uh, very close to our hearts at Africa Health Business. And that is the fact that Africa is rising. And uh, as you can see on my screen, we expect uh, Africa's healthcare sector value to be $265 billion by 2030. And if you combine this with the fact that um, one in four people in the world will be African by 2050, then you can see that our market opportunity as a continent is increasing. And um, in 2050, that market opportunity um, for healthcare will be uh, 2.5 trillion. And so Africa needs um, to be front and center of investment um, in the health sector. Now, this is uh, a little bit about the growth drivers that are there currently and are likely to increase. Now, we have new and dynamic financing models. And um, one of the things that I must say here is that primary healthcare has been 
um, identified as the key to universal health coverage that uh, most countries in Africa are aspiring to. But financing of primary health care is problematic um, because the business case is difficult to demonstrate. But in our experience at AHB, we've seen that uh, being innovative in both the demand side and the supply side financing um, has driven uh, quality and access and uh, business success in primary health care services. For example, I'll talk about blended financing that we've seen um, where, where donor funding, which is still a, a significant amount for health systems in Africa, is now being used to de-risk commercial loans um, for health service providers. And this increased capital is helping um, to improve quality and to increase the number of primary health care outlets um, by private sector, which then supplements uh, government uh, provided services. Now, uh, I'll talk about um, also the use of technology that um, is leveraging Africa's adoption of particularly mobile technology. So from the, in terms of demand, demand side financing, we've seen um, people being able to save for healthcare on mobile wallets. And through the use of digital technology, the service providers are then integrated to draw these funds. And all this is controlled by the health seeker on their mobile phone. So because Africa's uh, population is very underinsured, very few people have access to health insurance, uh, and out-of-pocket expenditure, you know, is it usually creates inequity, and we want to avoid this. So innovations are coming where people are taught to get into a culture of saving on their phones because they're already using their phones for mobile money and mobile transactions, and they can save every time they have a little bit of extra money into their a designated mobile wallet for healthcare. And this is helping um, to increase the demand side financing. I'll not delve so much into it because I have a lot of growth drivers to get into, but bold partnerships between public and private sector we have seen is changing the shape of health service delivery and making it more sustainable. And private sector innovations, when coupled with existing government infrastructure for healthcare, um, has been shown to, to in increase the quality and access of healthcare. The Africa Free Continental um, uh, Free Trade Area uh, that's driven by the African Union, we are closely following that because it's bound to increase trade across our borders and it will progressively reduce the 55 markets across. 1.4 billion people to uh, a, a single market, um, which is which will attract investors. The full participation of women is another growth driver. First, by focusing on uh, increasing access to sexual and reproductive health, which has been shown to decrease um, inequity and allow women to fully participate. Um, first to be healthy and fully participate in, in economic activities in the countries. Um, as Dr. Amit says, if we have half of our players not participating in economic development, then we're not doing well. And so it's good to see African countries um, moving towards the full participation of women. Pursuit of climate justice, we're ju we've just come, come from the climate summit in Nairobi. And uh, as you've seen, African countries are increasingly calling for the largest uh, contributors of climate change to support the countries that suffer the effects the most, which is African countries. Investment in renewable energy has also um, got um, a lot of attention lately and the potential in Africa is immense. The emergence of Africa's creative and cultural industry is continues to create jobs for the youth. As you know, Africa is a very youthful demographic and the involvement of this demographic in creative and culture um, businesses is creating jobs. Technology invention and adoption is another growth driver. I've already mentioned digital technology, but we have seen also increased adoption of technology in the health sector, particularly in manufacture of drugs and vaccines. We are seeing technology transfer from the West 
to Africa. We're seeing governments um, um, partnering with private sector to produce, uh, to bring technology that can produce vaccines, uh, cancer drugs and biological products. And um, increase of local manufacturing has been identified um, as key uh, to driving sustainability and growth in the health sector. Agricultural transformation through modernization of agricultural inputs, um, through input subsidies is making um, Africa more food secure and increasing jobs and increasing GDP. Allow me to stop there because I think my five, five minutes are up, but if there's anything you forget from this um, presentation, uh, do not forget that Africa is rising and is the next frontier um, for investments in the health sector. Thank you. Back to you, Brian. Thanks very much indeed. Impressive, uh, as always, Daniela. And thank you for stepping in. I think we'll maybe get you to do it more often than Amit in future. You can tell him I said that. Um, so moving on then to our final speaker. Um, I never, when I first met this gentleman, I wasn't quite sure what to call him because he has many names. He's called Jean Villebert. Uh, we now know him as Phil, and I hope he doesn't mind me introducing him as that. Phil, over to you, please. Thank you, Brian, and thanks for being such a passionate champion of Africa. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good afternoon. Uh, and thanks also to the ECH Alliance and the co-organizers of this uh, event for this opportunity to speak today. Uh, and thanks to my colleagues, uh, Dr. Nikes and uh, Dr. Daniela for covering a bit of what I also intended to, to talk about. So I just want to confirm a number of things. Number one, digital transformation is accelerating across the African continent, uh, driven by necessity, uh, but also driven by the extraordinary innovation and the penetration of mobile technology driven by the world's youngest and fastest growing population. So from telemedicine to mHealth apps to data analytics and recently increasing adoption of artificial intelligence based applications, new technologies are expanding access and quality of care in Africa. This innovation thrives through collaboration. So we need strong public and private partnerships between tech companies, healthcare providers, governments, and NGOs to co-create solutions that are tailored to the device, the, the diverse context uh, in, in Africa. When uh, sectors come together, we can accelerate the development of appropriate scalable technologies that can reach the underserved communities. Uh, and under, underpinning this innovation are innovative business models. Solutions uh, in Africa must be affordable, culturally appropriate, and able to reach the last mile populations. We are seeing great examples emerge from off-grid sensors that monitor public health trends, a virtual reality tools for telemedicine consultations, digital training models that equip community health workers, and so on and so forth. I also want to talk about the role of policy and infrastructure which must keep pace. Governments have a key role to play here in promoting digital literacy, ensuring that data security, ensuring data security uh, and privacy, improving internet connectivity, and most importantly, setting up interoperability standards so that this data can really be aggregated and moved across border and especially to Africa CDC to be able to support uh, uh, pandemic preparedness and response efforts. Um, with careful implementation, digital health presents an extraordinary opportunity for countries across Africa. It has the potential to drive equity further, uh, help leapfrog infrastructure gaps and strengthen primary care delivery and enhance real-time public health surveillance. Another important consideration is we want e-health to be truly people-centered and personal person-centered, and that will demand input from everyone in the society, especially the end users, even those that often are left behind because they are not digitally literate. I believe that if we work together, we can build 
tools and solutions that can empower, truly empower communities, save lives and create healthier nations across Africa. The time for bold collaboration and social, inno social innovation is therefore now. I want to take this uh, opportunity I'm given to really call on all of you in this room, those following us, uh, technologists, governments, healthcare providers, and development partners to join us in realizing the full potential of digital health to uplift lives across Africa. For those interested in diving deeper into those topics and forging new partnerships in this space, I invite you to join us in the upcoming Africa Health Tech Summit happening in Kigali on October 17th to 19th. You can uh, ask Brian for further tips on how to get there. He will be with us. It will be a great pleasure to have you and a valuable opportunity to further this important work. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity to speak today. And once again, let's work together, together to drive meaningful collaboration and progress in attaining universal health coverage by 2030 using the power of technology. Thank you so much. Thank you very much indeed. We're hoping to get all three speakers uh, on the screen. We have a short time for questions and answers. Everything seems to be down to five minutes these days. So I thank the speakers, first of all, for sticking to those. But we now have an opportunity, perhaps, to, here we are, uh, to speak to all three. Um, if I could just say the ECH Lance um, is dedicated to making sure that we know around the globe what Africa is doing. Um, it's really important that we, as a, the Global Connect Health Connector, have the ability to disseminate and communicate information, which allows us then to amplify the this brilliant messages coming out of Africa. As you can see, I'm an enthusiast, uh, unashamedly, because I really believe having been there and I'm going back again, as, uh, as Phil was saying, uh, in a couple of weeks time. And I'm really looking forward to it. Indeed, one of our other uh, directors, uh, Andy Bleeden, who many of you will know, is actually currently in Africa, uh, in uh, Marrakesh, in Morocco, attending the Africa Global Health Summit. That's how much we're dedicating our resources and our time to Africa. Why? Because it is not only rising, in my opinion, in many areas, it's already rising. And I just want to ask, starting with you, Danielle, if I could, um, the thing that strikes me that we don't know enough about is the sheer scale of Africa. You all know it very well. But I have to tell you, sometimes you have to state, taking Joe, Joe's approach, the obvious is not obvious, right? We, you may have knowledge, we don't have it. So would you mind very much if I put you on the spot and talk about, just talk about the population and the scale of Africa as a continent? Maybe you could just give us a few words on that. Thanks, Brian. Um, I'm actually in uh, Marrakesh for that uh, Africa Global Health uh, Summit. Uh, together with Nikes, and uh, we're looking forward um, to making our contributions there as well. Now, Africa is 1.4 billion people. Um, it's, however, more than 50 uh, different health markets. Um, and as I said, there's efforts to coalesce these markets to make it attractive for investments. Africa is also very youthful with majority of the population being below the age of 35. And so this presents um, an assured pipeline of um, consumers in healthcare and other sectors, an assured pipeline of health workforce and workforce for other sectors, an assured pipeline of uh, digital innovations um, for the future. And so, um, and then at the same time, uh, because of advances in healthcare, uh, we are going to have uh, just like in the rest of the world, um, an aging population that we need, we now have a, a chance to plan for. And so all this presents an opportunity uh, for innovation that can drive um, access to healthcare. And um, coupled with the fact that um, Africa has adopted um, mobile phone technology for e-commerce, for um, um, medical, paying their medical bills, uh, for day-to-day -day transactions, for banking, um, we can leverage this also in healthcare. Thank you, as usual. 
that was very helpful. Hope you all find it helpful. If I could ask you, Nikki, a, a question. That is, we all talk here about the digital world, and we'll talk to Phil in a moment about that. Where would you place Africa? This is probably an unfair question, but you're used to that for me. Um, where would you place Africa in terms of its journey towards digitization? Because we're still talking about it, so doing something about it in the rest of the world. But I'd just love to know where you feel Africa is on the journey. Can you hear us, Nikesi? Nikesi, yeah? Nikesi, you, sure. you are muted. Sure, sure. No, yeah. no. That... We're having some difficulty. I think you, your screen, oh, there you are back again. You with us now, Nikesi? Can you hear me? Yeah, please. Please carry on. Yeah, I, I was saying we've made significant progress. I think we even... Uh, during COVID, made really a stride, really ensuring that uh, we. I think we we've def definitely seen high internet penetration across the continent, important, and ensuring that we can undertake clinical trials, and ensuring that we can respond um, really efficiently to pandemic. Uh, it's very important because um, one of the comments when we COVID strike, I can say only one country could actually uh, uh, really screen and um, detect uh, uh, SARS-CoV-2. We ended up after eight months, the 55 member states were equipped to be able to respond at the national level, sub-national level, and been able to aggregate this data at the continental level with African CDC. You have seen again, Phil mentioned that our digital transformation strategy, and then again, the 4D from the African Union. I think we've really embraced uh, digital health in uh, addressing some key really um, uh, issues related to, to public health on the continent. Uh, telemedicine if, uh, really uh, has been mentioned as well. You can see from uh, the science, um, the society, the science, a foundation in Africa, Society for Africa, that is a clinical platform interlinking those clinical trial sites on the continent to be able to address some very critical issues around undertaking clinical trial for different diseases, pathogens across Africa. This is very important, and this is a new development to connect those uh, 1.4 billion people that we have, and then also the 55 member states. I think we have made significant progress. There's a political will to invest into digital health, also embracement from the community to be able to accept really uh, the technology and accept the change that can be uh, leveraged on this. Back to you, Brian. Thank you very much. The final question goes, uh, Nick, uh, as usual, to Phil, and it's, as usual, short amount of time. Phil, I wanted to ask you about infrastructure in Africa. We always, everybody talks about roads, bridges, tunnels, et cetera. The, the infrastructure of this century has to be digital in many ways. And I know I, I know the answer to the question because I've been with you and I've talked to you recently. Mm. Where do you see, the, what infrastructure? I see the genome, I see the digital hubs and so on. Do you want to say a couple of words on where you feel the CDC is leading uh, the Af Africa in terms of creating the infrastructure necessary for healthcare? So there are, they are like four components to the infrastructure that is needed uh, for, for digital infrastructure, especially that is needed. Number one is um, the electricity. It goes without saying that without powering community health centers um, and also powering mobile phones that uh, community health workers are equipped with, then we cannot really start talking about digital health. So that's where everything starts. So the power is a critical piece of infrastructure and good enough Africa is blessed with a lot of sunshine. Um, it doesn't have to go through the, the grid. Uh, any place in Africa today can be connected at uh, less than $100 uh, uh, through uh, solar power. So that's number one. Number two is the devices. And when you look at the penetration of 
smart devices. Uh, of course, Africa is still lagging a little bit behind, but also the growth in penetration of smart devices is the fastest on the continent. Um, so, so far when most of the application you see are based on feature phones, which is very good because we need to get to where uh, the mobile financial inclusion has reached, reaching more than 80% of the continent population because they will be, they were able to adapt to providing services on top of feature phones. But the penetration of smart devices is also growing very fast. So apps and so on can grow and we can equip this, uh, we can equip our community health workers and frontline workers with smartphones, then they can have uh, the intelligence that is available to the world. So that's number two uh, piece of infrastructure. Number three is the connectivity, the internet connectivity. And whereas it used to be sort of problematic to ensure that everyone has access to a GSM signal, uh, which reaches about 80% of the continent, even the 20% population coverage remaining are covered very well uh, using satellite. Um, SpaceX comes to mind, but there are so many satellite solutions that are increasingly high performance and low cost. So we believe that it's a, it's a great opportunity to also bridge that gap and make sure that regardless of where health workers are, uh, people stay on the continent, they can have access to services that are really powered by technology. And the fourth piece is the, the backbone infrastructure that links all of that. And then the data centers, this data need to be stored somewhere. And uh, we are very, very sensitive about data sovereignty issues. Uh, no one else in China, Europe, America is letting their data especially most sensitive private data of the citizen move around, why would Africa be a, an exception? We also want to consider our data sovereignty defined by the borders of the continent, not the borders of the 55 countries as uh, Daniela uh, talked about as part of the, uh, uh, the single digital market on, on this continent. So the infrastructure is, is uh, getting uh, in place. I would say that we still have a bit of a journey to, to go to make sure that there is a universal access to broadband infrastructure. And this constitutes one of the biggest investment opportunities that are available, still available in the world for everyone to come and have a conversation on us and see with us and see how we can work together. Over, thanks. Thank you very much indeed. Just before we close, I just want to say this. The ECH Alliance, as I said, is dedicated to working with our partners in Africa. We're looking forward to working closely with the CDC and with Africa Health Business. We already have started our work by creating part of our, our own infrastructure, which are these ecosystems we talk about. So for example, we already have an ecosystem in Zimbabwe. We're just about to open in uh, Zambia. We have other plans for, for other countries and uh, within Africa. And that will become part of the Global Health Connector, which gives instant access to precisely the same matrix and mix of organizations and people as around the world. Because we said at the beginning, you need connections. You then need to amplify the message. Uh, and you do that, of course, by convening meetings such as this sort of meeting. So I'm really looking forward to coming back to Africa. I'm looking forward to seeing you, Phil, in Las Vegas of all places. And I appreciate it's a very long journey from Africa to Las Vegas. I think it's 25 to 30 hours each way for you, but I appreciate you coming over and we look forward to seeing you there. So finally, just to say to the audience, Africa is not only rising, it is an opportunity. It is an opportunity which we would be very foolish, I think, to ignore. So may, I, may you all please thank the speakers for their involvement. Thank you very much, all of you. Thank you. <laughs>